in the last video, uh, video number five, we said that we were going to discuss carbon dioxide and its different uh, Lewis forms, the different resonance structures. Actually, we're going to save that for the next video. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about propene and the allele radical. And again, it's another real simple molecule. This is propene. With this double bond, of course, these two carbons are sp2 hybridized. And we didn't draw this very well. This carbon just has single bonds. So this carbon is sp3 hybridized. Now, we can form a radical with this fairly readily because, as we'll see, the radical, as far as radicals go, are, is uh, fairly stable. Um, what happens is this carbon and this hydrogen, let's say, they're each sharing an electron. Exaggerate the bond length here. They're sharing a, a pair of valence electrons between them. Um, what can happen is you can split this bond like this. So the hydrogen goes away, taking its electron with it, leaving this carbon with an unpaired electron. And what um, the easiest way to generate, that's called a, a radical then, carbon, it has its own electron, but now it's not paired with anything. This is now a radical, and radicals, of course, are very unstable because this carbon no longer has an octet. And the way, the easiest way to form the radical is to expose it to another radical, say so some compound or some molecule that has one unshared electron. And it needs one more electron so that this can have an octet. So then the bond is split. And then we have the hydrogen X bond forming that compound. And the reason why this bond can split fairly readily when exposed to another radical is because this radical the allele radical, we call it. This is fairly well stabilized. And to see why, we have to look at its structure more closely. Now, when we had the original compound, propene, where this was bonded to hydrogen, this is sp3 hybridized with its four single bonds. These two are sp2 hybridized. And each of these, this can be the carbon nucleus, and it has the p orbital. And then this one adjacent to it has its p orbital. And there is a lateral overlap of the p orbitals, and each carbon puts up one electron that they share between them, and we form the pi bond. Now, when we form the radical, so this is gone, the carbon keeps its electron, but now it no longer has an octet. So what happens is, when we form the radical, this carbon changes from sp3 hybridization to sp2 hybridization. The way it is right now is it was sp3 hybridized, so this would be an sp3 orbital with a bond. 
is an sp3 orbital overlapping to form that bond, an sp3 orbital here that overlaps with the hydrogen 2s orbital to form the bond, and that would be an, an sp3 orbital. But it doesn't stay like that. When we have the radical, this will change to an sp2 hybridization. Remember, carbon for the orbital block diagram. This is 2s, 2p, a pair of electrons here, a total of four electrons that carbon has. And it still has four electrons. It's just that this one is now unpaired in the radical. And then, as we've seen before, one of these gets promoted to the p orbital, one of these s electrons. So the orbital diagram is like this now for the radical. And the s orbital combines with two of the p orbitals, one s orbital, two p orbitals, so we have the sp2 hybridization. We combine together three atomic orbitals. Now, as you saw in the other videos, we have three molecular orbitals. These are the sp2 orbitals. They each have a single electron. And then we have the unhybridized p orbital with its single electron. And remember the geometry here, we'd have a carbon nucleus. And then for the sp2 orbitals, they're 120 degrees apart, each with a single electron. And then perpendicular to this, we have the unhybridized p orbital with its single electron. So this is now an sp2 bond, an sp2 bond, and an sp2 bond. Then we have the p orbital perpendicular to this that has its single electron. So we would have this carbon. And then the p orbital unhybridized that has a single unpaired electron once this becomes sp2 hybridized. So trying to draw the whole molecule together then, it would be like this for the radical now. These each have p orbitals with a single electron from here. Same here. And when this changes to sp2 hybridization, this has a p orbital with a single electron. So that's the radical. Now what happens is that we don't have the um, overlap of the p orbitals as we did before with the propene molecule, and we had that, gen that double bond here, the pi bond. What happens instead is that these three electrons are shared amongst all three carbon nuclei. So we can just try to show it like this. And again, it's that p electron delocalization effect, so that the electron here doesn't belong to this carbon anymore. This one does not belong to this one. This one does not belong to this one. They're shared amongst all three of them. Or we can think of this as like uh, an electron cloud, and the electron cloud is dispersed amongst all three carbon nuclei. So. What you have here is we have our single sigma bonds 
they stay, they remain the same, of course. And then we have like a sort of a partial bond here in addition to the single bond. And over here we have like a partial bond in addition to the single bond. But this then is a structure that helps to stabilize the radical by having these delocalized electrons being shared amongst all three carbon nuclei. Now, to try to show this situation uh, with um, Lewis diagrams, then we would have it like this. We'd have carbon, this one, and it has two hydrogens. Double bond to this carbon with a single hydrogen. And then this one, the radical one, let's show it like this. Well, the radical, the single electron, is in a p orbital. Now, these two, they're sharing each an electron in that overlapping pi orbital. Well, to draw the other Lewis structure for this, suppose that these shared electrons, this one keeps its own electron and no longer shares it with this carbon atom. So you would have carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, and its own electron that it's keeping. It's not sharing it, so it's unpaired. Then we would no longer have the double bond here, so just the single bond. And this one has its own electron, but it's not shared with anything. But this one also has a p electron unshared. So these two form a double bond. And of course, this has a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen. So all we did was we just reshuffled the distribution of P electrons. So now this one is the radical carbon instead of this one. And notice that these two are actually symmetrical, these structures. So this, these two Lewis structures that we drew are supposed to be representative of this situation here. When you see the double arrow between them, it does not mean that this is a double bond, then it's a single bond, and this is a single bond, and it's a double bond, and they keep going back and forth. Uh, it's not to be interpreted that way. What it is to be interpreted is that we sort of like have the single bonds, they remain, and then we have the sharing here, which sort of creates a fractional bond. And that's what we're trying to show here. It's not a single bond between these two, and it's not a double bond either. And that's what these Lewis structures are trying to depict when we have the different forms here. So the canonical forms that we draw, it's sort of peculiar because they don't really exist in reality, but it is helpful to draw them because the more canonical forms that you can draw, that means then that it's representative of a system that has more extensive delocalization of the, uh, uh, the p orbital electrons, and therefore the more stable it is. And when, when we're drawing the different Lewis structures that are possible, all the sigma bonds that we have, they remain the same. It's just simply of how we are reshuffling the pi orbital electrons in the different canonical structures, the different Lewis structures that we draw to try to depict this physical situation. Okay, um, that's it then for the propene molecule and the allele radical. In uh, the next video, video number seven, 
we will talk about carbon dioxide and its different uh, resonance structures. Uh, the, uh, the playlist for these videos now, the playlist is at the website at digital-university.org.